chapter 109 of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter 109, Faith and its Power of Achievement. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 to 35. And what shall I more say? For the time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, waxed mighty in war, turned to flight armies of aliens. Women received their dead by a resurrection. With the entrance into Canaan and the fall of Jericho, the first period of Israel's history closes. It would take too much time for the writer to proceed as he had done. He now mentions a few of the most prominent names from among the judges, the kings and the prophets, and then passes on to a general view of the very wonderful proofs that faith had given of what it could do or suffer. His desire is to take the veil from the heart of the Hebrews and show them what so many who know Scripture history will never see, that under and behind and within all the outward events recorded, there lives, as the vital principle, faith in God. The history is, on the one hand, the record of what God has done through and for those who have trusted Him, on the other, the proof that in God's leading of his people, the one token of his presence and working was always the spirit of faith which he gave. Faith in exercise is the breaking out of the divine life within, the very substance of things hoped for, the proof of the presence of things not seen. In mentioning the great achievements of faith, our writer gives three separate trios. In the first, we find mentioned what the heroes of faith had accomplished. In combat with their enemies, they subdued kingdoms. In ruling the people and opposing evil, they wrought righteousness. In dealing with God, they obtained promises. In the second, personal deliverance from wild beasts, from the powers of nature, from the violence of men, is in the foreground. They stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. In the third, we have the experience of the power of faith for personal strengthening. From weakness were made strong, waxed mighty in war, turned to flight armies of aliens. And then there is added one thing more. Women received their dead by a resurrection. By faith, women conquered the power of death. There is no power on earth that can stand before the power of faith, because the power of faith is the power of God working in us. The memory of the heroes and heroisms of the olden time may be most instructive if we regard them in their true light. One thing that impresses us is how little God has promised to faith that it will be freed from difficulty and danger. It would be as easy to God to prevent the enemy coming as to give the victory over him. To do this would be infinite loss. Faith would never be called into exercise. Man would never learn to know either his God or himself as his child. Every trial accomplishes a double purpose. It gives us the opportunity of honouring God by the trust with which we wait on Him, and it gives God the opportunity of showing how faithful He is in watching over His child, and how truly He is working for Him and in Him. It is in trial that all the heart of the child is drawn out towards the Father, in dependence and humility and trust. It is in trial that God can reveal in the opened heart of his child all the tenderness and all the saving power of his love. Without trial, there could be no school of faith, no growth of spiritual character, no strength of will given up to God and clinging to him. Let us bless God for every trial, small or great. It gives us a grand opportunity for putting the crown upon the head of God and of being made fit that he crown us too. Another thought of no less importance that comes as we think of the achievements of faith in the history of Israel is how closely they were all identified with the public welfare, with lives devoted to the cause of God and the people. Selfishness is the death of faith. How can you believe who take honour one of another? As long as we seek to be strong in faith for the sake of our own comfort and goodness and the possession of power, 
even if we dream of using it all for others, when once we obtain it, we shall fail. It is the soul that at once in its weakness gives itself up for the sake of God and others that will find in that self-sacrifice the need and the right to claim God's mighty help. Gideon and Barak, David and Samuel, they were all men whose names and whose faith would never have been known, but that they lived for their nation and God's cause in it, that they were God's chosen instruments for doing his redeeming work in his people. The sphere of God's special revelation is now no longer Israel, but the world. What a work there is to be done in it! Among Christians and heathen, in church and mission and school, in temperance and purity work, in the great fight against iniquity and worldliness in every shape, in larger and smaller circles, what room, what need, for the heroes of faith to subdue kingdoms, to work righteousness, to obtain promises! Let each of us offer himself to God for the struggle. And as we do so, let us remember well the double lesson. No faith without difficulties for it to conquer. No difficulty but faith can surely conquer. In this connection, let us cease seeking faith in our own interest. Let us lose ourselves in the work for God and souls. We shall lose ourselves to find ourselves back in God and his love. Wherefore, brethren, having boldness to enter into the holiest, let us draw near in fullness of faith. Live the life of faith in the holiest with God, then thy whole life on earth will be one of faith. Give thyself wholly to God. Thy faith will have the confidence to ask that God give himself wholly to thee. In the little things of daily life we need faith as much as in larger interests. Faith counts nothing insignificant, because nothing is good in which God is not. Faith yields itself to God for him most literally and completely to be all. Remember, the real value of strong faith is to gain victories for God, to live for the salvation of souls and the extension of his kingdom. End of chapter 109